kids that are here for the weekend with the Olympia Daniel Laurie Kevin Fitzgerald with you so glad you could be with us and we noticed it in day one a lot of star power here mm -hmm. uh, this is certainly an elite field it's amazing it's a postseason feel I mean you have to love that you're getting the ability to watch the defending national champions in February on ESPN so Florida State of course defeating Washington in the national championship series a year ago this is their first game in this tournament yeah and I think that this is great I love that they started King I mean they have so much experience this is this is what you want to this is what you want to be watching and so it is Megan King who dominated the women's college world series a year ago who does start against Ohio State what's the challenge going to be like for Ohio State haters today well I mean with Megan King and what she's experience throughout her five years at Florida State she is definitely someone that has the ability to make people look silly so when it comes to Ohio State it's really going up there with a plan and purpose uh, behind every single at bat and understanding that you are going to get out she is going to get you out but if you can find a way to get better every single at bat it's gonna be it's gonna be good and so already a pair of wins for the red shirt senior for Parkland, Florida. Day two of the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is underway. And this is the lineup that Megan King will attack today for Ohio State. And the lineup brought to you by St. Pete Clearwater. Andy Farrow from Ohio gets it started. Florida State already with a weekend of games in its rear view mirror. Ohio State as well. Stays ball at two strikes. So Megan King's spectacular in that Women's College World Series a season ago. Posted four wins, leading Florida State to its first national championship. If you're Ohio State, this is a nice challenge to try to take on head on here to open up their tournament as well. Well, uh, if this doesn't fire you up, if you're Ohio State, I don't know what will. And Farah having this at bat, just battling and battling, that's what you want from your leadoff. You want someone in the top spot that's going to see a lot of pitches and really just get the rest of the lineup like, hey, fired up. Look at me. I'm attacking her. But... On the flip side, Megan King, I mean, coming out, throwing strikes right off the bat, not trying to do too much, really utilizing that curve coming from the left side away to the lefty and Farah. Strike three. So King beats Farah upstairs and one down to the first. Well, this is what makes King so good. She just has it in her to throw the rise piece right under the hands. You see how that just gets sneaky right up underneath. That is a hard pitch to hit. And King is going to face a few more lefties in the starting lineup for Ohio State. This will be a fun battle. Lily Piper falls behind. Now think it's two. Piper, the second team All-American. Not just a terrific shortstop, but brings power to the lineup. Well, and she came up to bat, too, with that plan of, like, we're swinging early. You look at Ferry. We are, you have to realize that you are going to get struck out, but I think if you go up there and you're cautious, that's when it can turn bad. Two down.
So Megan King in her third start of the season. Already with a pair of strikeouts to begin. Emily Clark is helped Ohio State. Get off to a three and one start. The lone loss last weekend is Central Florida. Ohio State and head coach Kelly Kovac Shanley making this a habit. They were in Orlando last weekend. They returned back to Florida for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational this weekend. When you see some of these hitters really swinging and missing and King throwing the heat. I mean, she's throwing the upper 60s. It's tough to recognize that in February, what it's like to hit that speed. I mean, that's something that over time, hitters, the more game reps you see, you are going to get better. So the struggle is real in February when you're playing a Megan King who throws the ball in the upper 60s, especially coming from the left side early in the season, early in the morning as well. 9.30 start. Don't even get me started on that. I said that to Megan King before the game. I'm like, how are you, like, what's your thought process throwing a 9.30 game? She said, I rolled over at 6.30 and I snoozed till 6.50. And I said, why am I throwing this game? Clark did not go, two balls and two strikes. Trying to punch out the side. You saw a couple great shots of the crowd as well. We're just about four hours drive from Tallahassee, so even despite the early start, another terrific atmosphere here for day two. Yeah, this is amazing. We got the chance to come in yesterday and watch a couple games and see the crowd support. Of course, people want to watch FSU. That's the first changeup, Megan King's thrown. Now the payoff. And Clark continues to battle. Yeah, Clark having a heck of an at-bat. I think if King can locate that changeup, bring that up a little bit, look like on that last one, she kind of slowed down her body a bit. But I think if she's able to get that up a up a smidge, she'd be able to get Clark. Clark will see an 11th pitch coming up. If I'm not going change here, I'm trying to sneak something up under her hands, maybe that rise ball. Swing and a miss. Megan King strikes out the side. Her first inning of work at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitation. The sophomore from Morrison, Illinois, starts today for Ohio State, Lauren Rice. Her second outing, and she gets to face this national championship winning Florida State team already with a win this season. Well, and I think for her to get ahead early, find that strike zone, as well as mix speeds, when you face an offense like Florida State, you really have to be able to throw that change up just change speeds a little bit, but for her, it's about staying calm. You can go out there, that heart rate can get elevated. There's a lot of pressure. You're playing the defending national champion. You have to just be calm, cool and composed, and rely on hitting your spots. So the Florida State starting lineup begins with Kaylee Herod, who has terrific speed at the top of the lineup, brought to you by the St. Pete Clearwater. As you said, that is a dangerous order. Many returners from that national championship winning team last June. Harry 
Jared, one of the eight starters around the diamond that return this season. Empire coming out to talk to Rice in the circle. Wondering if it has to do with both feet maybe being on the rubber, but there's a lot these days as far as making sure you pause your two seconds before. That's another piece that plays into like the mental part of the game. The umpires came up to her twice, and then you see her continue to throw more balls and throw four straight balls. And Jordan. Let's be honest, if, if you're going to beat a team like this, you can't, you have to find a way to get ahead. Knowing Herod, knowing her speed and ability to steal bases, she's the last person you want to give that free pass to. And Herod takes off on the first throw to Gordon. So Florida State picking up right where it left off last season, stealing bases. Yeah, I mean, that's her seventh stolen base of the season. She is seven of eight. She has so much speed. She's pretty much a guaranteed stolen base, and you just see by the time the ball gets there, she's already standing up. Rice's first start was the season opener against George Mason. And now the second start against the second-ranked Seminoles. Senior from Miami, Carson Gordon. And that was called an illegal pitch. From the third base umpire. There's Jim Bertuzzi. This will move the runner over. Ashley Prangy over to first. And so Rice has it out. And that's better, number 24. So a few pitches in, already a runner at third base for Florida State. And Sydney Sherrill coming up. Gerald, the sophomore, a player has, has earned her way onto the Player of the Year watch list. As a freshman, a catalyst during the Women's College World Series last season for Florida State. Yeah, she came into Florida State and made an impact right away. I mean, she was the ACC Freshman of the Year just shows what she was able to do throughout that whole season. But coming into the Women's College World Series and playing your absolute best, you love when freshmen have the ability to come in and make an impact on a team like Sydney, Cheryl. And those are her numbers from last year. I mean, nation leading doubles, 29 doubles on the year. Cheryl went around. And so to your point, you, you lose a couple players like Jesse Warren and Kylie Hansen off of that championship winning team. You bring back freshman of the year, though, sitting second in the order. Now the count full. Well, and what you love is that they got to have that year with a Jesse Warren. They got to be her teammate experience how that went, what she went through, and learn from that. They played the infield together. Jesse Warren playing third base, and so there's a lot I'm sure she was able to learn from her last year that will help her this year. Great pitch from Rice, and there's two down. The next batter, number five, Elizabeth Mason. One thing that Rice does well is she keeps that ball down in the zone. You see that drop on the outer half. Cheryl just with the waft, just trying to get her bat to touch it. Comes up with a big strikeout. And so Rice trying to strand a runner at third. Oh, 
Elizabeth Mason, one of a couple Tampa natives on the roster. Tallahassee already kind of a short drive from where she grew up and now a bit of a shorter drive in Clearwater this weekend. You said you spoke to Megan King about the early start. Now the question to you, did you like the early start times? Heck no, 9.30? <laughs> This body cannot get going that early. And that's what one of the things Megan King said. She said, I'm starting to realize that I'm getting older and it takes longer for my body. And I'm like, you are not old. You are what, 20? She just turned 23, she said. I'm like, I wish, I'll trade you. <laughs> <laughs> Counterpart in the circle, Rice, just a sophomore. Falls behind three and one to Mason. One of the many top 25 battles in Clearwater this weekend. That's an unfortunate illegal pitch again. The rule has changed now where the runners don't get to advance, but it will become a ball in the hitter. So which would have been a 3-2 count. And it would have gotten her out of the inning. That's what's difficult with this illegal pitch situation. It can kind of become a mental block. And in college, the rule, you cannot crow hop. There can't be any air in between when you throw. Mason safe at second. And then you mentioned as well the two second pause as well before each pitch. I will figure out what she is doing out there, but. I'd imagine it is either that two second pause or I think that there is a slight crow hop, which is really hard to fix. Like you, Kelly Barnhill with Florida is, is another example where you can't just fix it every single pitch. And what will frustrate me is that like the umpires, like she's still doing it every single pitch. So there's random times when they want to call it and then there's random times when they don't. So you just want consistency with that. Well, Lauren Rice in Ohio State, get out of that jam, strand a pair. Kids for a reason, and when they lost game one to UCLA, they called that team meeting and found a way to make it work. And not just winning elimination games, they won those six games in three and a half days. You typically have to do win in a condensed schedule. Five, they had to play mul Dick multiple Kennedy. times, twice. And they just continued day. to keep getting better and better and better throughout the World Series. It was like, you know that that's such a tough road. You lose game one, you have to wait and watch the uh, winner's bracket Friday, and then you're like, all right, I'm headed into elimination Saturday. This could be my last day. And I think playing with your backs against the wall is one thing, but just to continue to get better, like, I remember sitting and watching these games being like, man, I'm nervous for that next team they're going to play because they are on an absolute tear and a mission. And it was incredible. If it wasn't going to be the Huskies, Kevin, I'm glad it was Florida State. I almost said look away <laughs> before we flash the highlights from the championship series. And I think that there's nothing like winning a program's first national championship. And I was fortunate enough to be able to be part of that UW one in 09, but I know how incredible that feels when you will be able to stand at the end with your hand up in the air and how great that is for the program and how proud your city is, your university. It is just such a big deal. And even getting to go in and hug Coach Alameda before the game, she coached me in the 08 Olympics. And I said, man, I never got the chance to congratulate you. And 
I said, I hope you're soaking this in. She goes, is it, is it okay that I still am? And I said, man, never let this go. Keep soaking it up. I know I still do. <laughs> you said it, it, it felt like Florida State and Coach Alameda team just got better and better even facing those difficult circumstances when you won it with Washington. Did you feel that surge at one point or another? Um, we weren't like them where we had to go that back road so much, but we did lose the game on Sunday, so we had to play two Sunday. And um, I think that the season prepares you for those moments. Like there's definitely trials and tribulations throughout a season that allow for you to get to those hard points in the postseason to be like, okay, we've really battled through to work. So we're going to have success here. And Florida State was definitely battle tested. Megan King was good in that women's college world series and has five strikeouts today. Still no score. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Welcome back to Clearwater. Day two, St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson, Ohio State, one of the 11 ranked teams in the field this weekend. And Kelly Kovac, Shane Lee's team, finished 36 and 16 a season ago, most wins in eight years. And they've got a legitimate player of the year candidate on this roster, Danielle, and Lily Piper over at short. Yeah, Lily Paper is a stud, and she's just continued to get better throughout her career at Ohio State. And you want those types of seniors to go out with a bang. And going into your senior year can be a little emotional. You're like, this is going to be my last time I get to wear the uniform. Danny Morgan with a base hit. So, Danielle, you were talking about this in the first inning. Lauren Rice was called for several illegal pitches. And I think based on the coach with the, with how she's putting her foot down, I think that it has something to do with her foot sliding off the uh, front of the rubber. And you see when she stepped forward there that her back foot was touching a smidge. The rule is both feet have to be touching the mound, which I've feel fortunate that they've changed the rule internationally now where one, the back foot can be off tremendously because you think about how small that rubber is. So to try to generate power as a pitcher, to get your body to go forward where both feet have to be touching, there's not a lot of space. Morgan out at second. Emily Clark right on the money and there's one down. So a pair of stolen bases for Florida State in the first inning and none here in the second. And Clark throws a gun to Piper who gets the quick tag before Morgan gets her foot in there. And those are the little things that Ohio State has to do throughout the game. They have to come up with those big plays, throw great pitches like that. Rice throwing the change. You see Clark getting excited. It's the little things like that that give teams like Ohio State that extra little bit of adrenaline when they're playing a team like Florida State. And the smirk after the change for Rice. This one in foul ground off of Casas' is bad. Piper got a glove on it. We'll do this again. Well, you asked out of Rice before the start of this game. Got to mix in the change. And she's doing it towards the bottom end of the lineup. Maybe she's starting to get it warmed up a little bit for when she starts turning it around second at bat. So she's getting a good feel for that pitch. Casas lays off. Now two balls and two strikes. It's all about getting your swagger in the circle. Whatever that is for you, whether it's throwing your change up late late in the lineup, but just getting a feel. Everything's visual. You want to see that pitch do what you want it to do, and that just kind of peps you up a little bit more on the mound, gives you a little extra confidence. Piper makes the play, two down. So what was it for you? What gave you that swagger on the mound? 
striking people out. No. <laughs> Next batter, number seven. Honestly, it was Sip being able, uh, yeah, it was to be able to throw the change up. Because if you throw the change up and you can really make speed, then you can toy with any hitter. If you're having a tough time, sometimes you can get out there and you can get a little anxious as a pitcher. You can try to overthrow. You can get, like, you're trying too hard and your changeup can can be too fast or your body's showing that you're throwing that pitch. So I think whatever a pitcher's best pitch is, to be able to establish that pretty quick to say, hey, I know that I'm coming in here with this, with my best pitch, but I'm also able to change speed so I can really get in the hitter's head. Good pitch. Second strikeout for Rice. Cassidy Davis up next, fouls the first pitch off. Davis, the junior from Valrico, Florida. Off to a fine start this season. And South Florida State begin 5 0. The Seminoles outscored teams 31 2 in those five wins last weekend. One. Rice with the quick reflex. So two scoreless innings for Lauren Rice. Five strikeouts for Megan King, Florida State's All-Star. And the All-SEC selection back out there to face the bottom third of the order for Ohio State. Bree Betchel gets it started, the left fielder for the Buckeyes. Betchel off to a nice start, hitting 375. Four games into the season. And once again, Megan King out ahead of another hitter. The ball at two strikes. Six Ks for the senior. And she struck out the last three. Nice batter, number eight, Nikki Carver. And this is one of those curveballs just by you. She's so late on that. It's tough when you're running as a slapper already, but when you have that ball coming from the left side with King, it's tailing away from you. You really have to try to stay on plane with that. Mickey Carver, the Georgia native, next to face King. He's already got a pair of wins. King pitched in every single one of those women's College World Series games a season ago. 
Allowed one earned run, that's it, over nearly 35 innings. 1.20 ERA in the Women's College World Series, which is the lowest ERA in Women's College World Series history, so. She does what she does best. She gets those strikeouts. You see her getting her seventh of the day. Taking that rise ball up on the outside part of the plate, and that's a tough pitch to throw. That rise ball away from hitters. She gets up underneath it. And you see her Women's College World Series numbers, 4-0, 30 Ks. She was lights out. You don't need to search too far for the reason why Florida State did what it did. How about that combination of King, but then Kylie Hansen as well in the circle? Yeah, they were super fortunate to be able to get Hansen, who transferred over and really helped her out. She was a righty pitcher. The combination of the lefty righty was outstanding, but just looking at Florida State and the the recap, one of the best seasons that they will ever have. I mean, I know and remember how hard it was trying to chase that national championship for the second year. The pressure instantly starts after you win it because everyone's asking you, hey, are you going to be able to do it again? Can you do it again? I know the struggle. Make sure to throw that in the car with you for the road trips. Bring that national championship banner. Sydney Sherrill for the third out. Up against the fence. Just enough real estate. Welcome back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson Day 2. We are here through Sunday. So you're looking at what's labeled Field 9. Field 8 is next to us. There are actually four ranked oh, okay, teams okay. playing within about 100 feet of each other. That's we, When we say elite, we do mean elite. Notre Dame and Tennessee is actually ongoing right now next door. And there really has never been this collection of talent. I guess you could say at an East Coast venue down in Florida. Nice drive for Florida State. And a, a wonderful event. It's the first owned and operated ESPN softball event. So I know we're both privileged to be here. We've had some terrific games this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going to that Mary Nutter in Palm Springs, which was another big time tournament where there's a lot of top teams as well as the Cal State Fullerton tournament. So I think just adding this one in is incredible because the more big time hype tournaments you get, it gives us athletes so much excitement. Like I remember when I was at UW, I always loved going to that Mary Nutter, Palm Springs. You had the best of the best, the fan support. I mean, it was one of the coolest tournaments. You just have so much swagger when you walk in. You're like, man, like I, I can't believe I'm here. I deserve to be here. This is great. So I think that this is a tournament that will 100% get to that level. It has that big time showcase feel to it. The fans travel a, a, a bit better perhaps than just the typical in-conference series. There's so much around here. They have the, the spring training if they wanted to stay a little extra. They have the beaches. You can bring your kids. It was minus three in Columbus, Ohio a couple weeks ago, so it also gives some fans an opportunity to get down to Florida. Heck, yeah.
Base hit for Noah. That's a rip up the middle for the number nine hitter in the order for Florida State. She just takes this pitch that's left over the heart of the plate and hits it right back up the middle. That's what you want out of that nine hitter. You want them to be scrappy, see a lot of pitches, get on base, and pass the bat to the top of the lineup. So Lauren Rice about to face one through nine in the order for the second time. That was just the second hit Rice allowed. Walked a couple batters, but outside of that, is not allowed to run yet. So Herod pulled the bat back, count one and nothing. And so Noah moves to second. Well, and that's just something that can't happen. <laughs> I mean, that. Pitch needs to be caught, and Rice needs to have a little bit better control. I mean, we're getting not super late in the game, but, like, those are the little things that we have to shore up. Aaron Bunch anyway. So, no, it's a third. Now you've got the heart of the order for the defending national champs coming up. Well, and that's the unfortunate part for Ohio State, that pass ball. Now you have Noah at third, which gives FSU two outs to play with. Gordon hit a little sack fly here. You're for sure with Noah's speed going to be able to score her. Gordon grounded out to second, first time up. Count evens. It was close. It was really close. I like that. I want that pitch. If I'm in the circle, I want that. Two one to Gordon. Piper's got the runner caught. Well, there's going to be an out, but a runner will still be on third base. So the heads up from Gordon to wrap all the way around back to third. When Gordon turns on this to Piper, and she's such a stud at short, she goes and attacks. Noah knows not to throw it home. It'll give her that easy escape back to third. But you see Clark with the little drift ball there that she throws to McMenemy, but they end up getting Noah out at home. But what you like is the runner's able to advance, get all the way to third base to still give them a scoring opportunity. Heads up base running by Gordon, but I like that Ohio State was able to nail down the rundown. That's the hard part in February. Those little tiny like rundowns where like it can start to get weird right off the bat. I think when you're able to execute those, it's a big out. The February six two five six rundown. <laughs> So Kelly Kovac Shanley discussing with Liz Hammerschmidt. She's the home plate umpire. Now the umpires 
They got together a moment ago. But now we're ready to go with two outs. And it's Gordon at third. Here's Sidney Sherrill. You see Rice taking a little extra look at the umpire back there. I mean, it seems like the zone's just tightening up a smidge, and I think that that, as a pitcher, can get frustrating. You establish the strike zone the first couple innings, you know where to throw that ball to get a strike, and I've seen her throw a couple good pitches that, that have not been called for a strike, and I'm always gonna have the pitchers back because hitting has gotten a lot better, and I think that for you to be able to throw it a little bit off the weight of the plate, it should be called strike. Strike one. And it looks like the same pitch. <laughs> well, Rice owned the zone last week of the season opener against George Mason, allowed just one hit. Picked up the win, didn't allow a run. And she's got a chance to shut out Florida State through three innings. Well, and Cheryl's the type of hitter that's going to come up the second time and not make the same mistake she did. She knows she got her with that drop ball on the outside part of the plate, that 3-2 count. Cheryl's going to have a better at bats. So you have to find a way, if you're Rice, to attack her a little bit differently and be okay with the walk with two outs. Runners at the corners. So that's the third walk issued by Rice today. Florida State has had opportunities. It's 0 of 4 with runners in scoring position. There's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mason. Inning over. Rice strands a few more. When we come back, we'll talk to Kelly Kovac Shaley, Ohio State's head coach. Back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson, still scoreless. And the start of the fourth inning, we're happy to have Ohio State head coach Kelly Kovac Shanley join us. Coach, thanks for the time. Three scoreless innings for Lauren Rice. What's impressed you most? I just think she's being resilient. She's out there. She, you know, she's got some great hitters to face. You know, she's not being perfect, but she's being, you know, resilient in the moments that she needs to be. Coach, your offense playing against Megan King, you know what you got with her. That second, third time through the lineup, what are the adjustments you're wanting your offense to make? Yeah, I mean, they just have to put the ball in play and see what happens. I mean, their swings are too big for this kind of pitcher. The movement's too strong. And, you know, we talked about just getting some runners on. We'll play some small ball, you know, get a big hit here and there and, and keep this game tight and, you know, pull it out on defense. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And one time through the order, Megan King has struck out seven. And she's only allowed two batters to, as Coach mentioned, put, put the ball in play. That's all. Seventh season as the head coach at Ohio State for Kovac Shanley. Actually, her first win this season was her 200th win as the Buckeye head coach. She's raised the, the expectation. She's raised the bar for Ohio State. A season ago, won the most games in eight years. And advanced to another NCAA tournament. It was the third straight for Ohio State. And look, it finds itself in the top 25 to start the year. We will have that sort of access all weekend as well. You're going to hear from Lonnie Alameda, 
Florida State's head coach in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Eight strikeouts for King. Next batter, number 22, Lily Piper. Painting the corner. Well, and Farah, what are you looking at? Like, that's a one-two count. That thing is way too sweet. You cannot leave that. Got to pick up that bat off your shoulder, especially the second time through the lineup. You know how King attacked you the first time, and that second time, have to find a way to be a little bit different. You just heard from the head coach, employing your team. You got to put the ball into play. Twenty home runs a year ago for Piper, looking for her first this season. There's a healthy cut. Count stays nothing at two. And we'll see the second time through the lineup if King starts to establish that changeup a little bit more. We've seen her throw it one time through this lineup. By the way, that, that ball landed on the field next door to us. We mentioned before Notre Dame and Tennessee, two ranked teams, they're battling on the aforementioned field. So that had to, that halted play for a moment. Foul ball. Too many ranked matchups to count. One that's right after this game is number two against number three. Florida State faces Oklahoma. That's going to be on ESPNU at 1 Eastern. So Megan King throws this game with Oklahoma next. And I think that what's the point of showing her to Oklahoma? I mean, I know that it's, it's February. And yeah, if you make the Women's College World Series or if you have to play them in the postseason, that's not till May, June, but what's the point? Like, regardless if you, you beat Oklahoma or you don't, I mean, it's a 2-3 matchup. It doesn't matter that much. You always want to win, don't get me wrong, but I think it's more important to maybe get your younger pitchers a little bit of experience. Doesn't mean King can't come in if, say, the game was close or she needed to close it out, but I think sometimes those big field games, coaches, Need to put their young pitchers in and just, I mean, I hate to say it, but throw them to the wolves. It's okay. It's okay for them to battle and experience those emotions and struggle. Because if you don't struggle and know how to get through that, you're not going to get to the postseason and all of a sudden, oh, hey, I have this. I got this. You have to really go through those tough teams. So I think that might be a good opportunity for Florida State to throw someone else and really see what they're made of. Well, someone's going to get an Oklahoma team that won twice yesterday here. Defeating Notre Dame and Kentucky. So King, the senior with eight strikeouts. Trying for her ninth. 2-2 two -two count on Emily Clark. Foul tip into the mitt. Nine strikeouts for King. Nothing but zeros on that board for the star hurler. We'll have the head coach, Lottie Alameda, next. Top 25 battle, Ohio State and Florida State. Megan King through four scoreless innings. Florida State starter, we have Florida State's head coach, Lonnie Alameda, joining us. 
Coach, Megan King, nine strikeouts. How would you describe her performance four innings through? Uh, pretty good. I mean, started out a little bit slow, and now she's definitely getting the groove and knowing what she wants to do. And they're hacking. They're, they're swinging for it. They're hacking. So probably make a few adjustments here as we get through the third time. Coach, congratulations again, winning your national championship last year. Heading into this season, what was your message to your players? Because there is that added pressure of, hey, are you going to do it again? So what did you say to them heading into this year? Uh, we legitly just chatted about it. You know, I mean, there's a defending the title mentality or we the reigning champions, which is fine. And we're at the bottom of the hill with everybody else. And we're scratching and clawing one pitch at a time and have some fun with it, just like we did last year. She's the seven-time ACC Coach of the Year. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. And, and at the bottom of the hill, literally describing that or, or perhaps illustrating that to her team, there's a terrific article on Florida State's website and, and referenced how Coach, she drew a mountain, drew a valley on a whiteboard before the start of the year and said, this is where we were, this is where we are now. We are beginning just where everyone else is around the nation in 2019. Yeah, it's hard. It's, and I know it because I remember it so vividly, that pressure. And luckily, nowadays, teams have a staff as far as pitching. Um, so I felt maybe a little bit more pressure because I was throwing all the time. So pitchers have help. So I think that that does help where it's like, man, it's not all on my shoulders. If, if I'm not pitching, like there's still an opportunity for us to win. But I don't care what you say. You still have that little birdie on your shoulder that's saying like, hey, are you going to be able to do this again? So it's really about the hay you put in the barn in the off season and how you're able to go to work after you win that national championship. It can be pretty easy to ride that out and say, hey, this was so cool. Like, look what we were able to do. We're the absolute best. But like, how can we stay on top? Is our work ethic going to get even deeper? Are we going to work even harder? And that's when you see when the true teams are able to just continue to get better and better and better. And so it's easy to say sometimes, well, I'll try to block it out, but you just referenced it. You're hearing it from, who was it, fans, family, staff, media. teammates? Yeah. Media right away. It's like as soon as you win that national championship, like I'm gar I guarantee you when they were – you know, getting interviewed after the game. It's like, hey, do you think you guys are going to be able to do it next year? And I remember, like, when I got asked that question, I'm like, hold up. Like, can I just, like, soak up this beautiful trophy and this with my teammates before I start thinking about all that stuff? Because you really, it's, the world is such a crazy place these days, and I think to really just be mindful of how cool these different opportunities are, especially winning a championship. That's every college athletes dream is to win a national championship so i think when you get those opportunities to just truly soak it up with your teammates because you do remember the championship but most importantly you remember that with your teammates you remember the grind the conditioning at 6 a.m the weights at 6 a.m you remember everything that leads you to that moment well now i feel bad i was about to ask can florida state do it again Un unfair be to ask no at this no point. but it's my job to tell you if they can or if they can't and I, and I think that they have all the right pieces to do it but I will say when you get to the postseason there's a little bit of luck sometimes there's stuff that goes your way and then there's stuff that's not there's maybe you know the winds going your in your favor at, at times and it's not but at the end of the day Florida State should win the whole thing at the end this one has a chance and shall not with the home run, Florida State's on the board. And she was a huge reason for Florida State's success last year in the postseason. She had five home runs in the postseason. You see her step up today, second time through the lineup. Takes that pitch, missed a little too sweet over the plate, and launches that thing out of here. And Shell nuts that, that hitter that comes up when you need her in the clutch. And I think that that's just what Florida State needs. There is more added pressure on this team regardless. They're playing a team ranked in the top 25, but they should be beating them by a lot, right? They should. That's just what everyone expects. So I think when you have a teammate that comes up that just hits an absolute bomb, just allows for you to take a little bit of a breath. Like, oh, okay, everything's going to be okay. Longer this game goes on without a score, 
pressure starts to, to build up a little bit. So the shutout is gone. That's the first run that Lauren Rice has allowed in two starts. So it's ironic, Florida State had all those runners on base, begins 0 of 5 with runners in scoring position, and the first run, a home run, get the Seminoles on the board. We were down in that dugout before the game, there's, there's certainly a great energy. There's so many returners from last year's championship team, and even Coach Alameda was pointing it out. A couple of the players were smiling, laughing, having some fun pregame. She goes, that's just the normal around here. Well, and she really, that's what she wants. And she wants her players to play that way and really play loose and be themselves. And getting a chance to be coached by her when she was helping with Team Canada when we had gone to the Olympics, like she was that really easygoing coach that you felt like you could go and talk to. And she really seems like she's that same way. And I think that there is definitely more pressure when you are the head coach. But being able to have your players feel like they can go to you, talk to you, trust you, you can make them laugh, vice versa, um, especially when the pressure gets going. And I think that's what I admired the most about them and watching her in the Women's College World Series last year was that she just stayed the same the whole time. Like. Her team was having a ton of fun. She was smiling. So what's the point if you're not enjoying it? Danny Morgan grounds out. Even dating back to your time competing in College World Series, do you notice that from time to time? Some coaches and game plans tending to change a bit when the pressure is on? Oh, for sure. I mean, pressure brings a really uncomfortable thing sometimes. And different people or coaches react to different things and um, I mean but they had the experience she's been to the World Series a couple times and they've had the two in queue where they've been out right away lost the first two games and they had that heartbreak of when they lost when they had Jessica Burroughs and Alex Powers and Ellie Cooper and they played LSU and they lost in that in that super regional and that is heartbreaking so I think when you experience all of this it's like when you get to the biggest stage, especially in the World Series, it's like, as a coach or as a player, like, I can't go here and be different. Because if I try to be something I'm not, it's not going to pan out the way I want it to be. So Coach Alameda has experienced a lot in her coaching career, getting to do the Olympics with Team Canada in 08. I was fortunate to be able to play for her, but she's experienced a lot at different programs, UNLV. And she established a pretty cool home at, at Florida State. And look at what she's done. Two one on the way to Casas. Over Adi's head. So it's a double for Zoe Casas with one down in the fourth. And the second time through the lineup, you see Florida State making adjustments and Rice leaving the ball too much over the white of the plate and Casas comes up and just launches his double straight over Adi's head in center field. This is when you need to worry about Florida State. Second time through the lineup, you know that they've gone in, they've passed on information, they've made those adjustments and they're going to come after you. Uh, if Rice could somehow work out of this inning with, without allowing any more damage, these would be four strong innings, even despite a lot of the misses out of the strike zone. And we've seen a couple of legal pitches as well called on the sophomore. Yeah, and that is difficult and frustrating. I, I can't imagine trying to deal with that five six seven illegal pitches and it can get to you a little bit and can get to your head I think battling that type of adversity I think she's done a pretty good job because there has been a good amount that have been called 
a couple strikeouts that have been reversed. So that can be frustrating. I get frustrated up here in the booth, so I can't imagine. But these student athletes, look at how she's dealing with it. You can't even tell. This is Cassidy Davis. And the count evens. Waits on it. One hops the fence. Casas scores 2 0. Back to back doubles for the Seminoles. You see her just wait on that flip change that's left up, up, up in the zone, and she launches that thing. Takes it right past right center. Comes up with another big RBI. Running for the Knowles at second is number 26, Leslie Barrett. So it's an inning that features two doubles and a home run for Florida State, still only one out. Leslie Ferris now at second base to pinch run. Kat Duvall coming in. Senior pitcher. So pitching change at the Eddie C. Moore Complex. 2-0, Florida's... So Kat Duvall, a senior from California, replaces Lauren Rice. And now in the circle, trying to limit the damage. A pair of runs for Florida State in the fourth. Danielle, the second appearance this year for Kat. Yeah, she's got to attack that strike zone. I mean, it's the obvious statement, but it couldn't be more true, especially when you're coming in to relieve a pitcher in Rice. You want to come in, find that strike zone, and get ahead of these hitters. Next batter, number 44. Noah. And Rice, the sophomore, done after three and a third innings of work. And that runner at second also belongs to Rice. Couple strikeouts. The walks didn't really hurt her. It was the extra base hits here in the fourth. Counts the ball with two strikes. I like it. Comes out right out of the gate. Throws that change, 1-1 one, one count, gets ahead. Duvall had her best outing of her career last time out, last weekend. It's a nice pitch. And you're right, it, it's interesting hearing that last weekend was her first complete game ever. She's been known to be a closer. She comes in when the pressure's hot. So they said last weekend was the best that she's ever thrown. Another base hit. So Davis to third, and Morgan Noah has her second hit today. A pair of singles. She takes that change up left up a little bit. Noah stays on it with her front shoulder, is able to just get that poke through over Piper. Now four hits in the frame for Florida State. Piper! 
Runner takes off from third. Ferris is out of third. Big out for Ohio State. That didn't quite work as planned for the Seminoles. But Ohio State, if it can get out of this innings with just two runs damage, it'll be a plus. Yeah, and Clark throws this missile. You see Piper come, cut it off. Looks like she's going to tag her, but sees that Ferris is running towards home and able to come up with the big rundown again where they get that runner at third. You see them get themselves out of a jam. That one rolled over to McMenemy. Two runs for Florida State. Cat Duvall in relief. Nice work. Day two of the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Welcome back to Eddie C. Moore Complex in Clearwater. The weather essentially perfect. A top 25 battle with Danielle Lori, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Florida State with runs. And took a few innings, kind of a what-if inning for Florida State. Left a runner at third, but still ahead now. Maybe that's all Megan King really needs. Sheldon makes the catch, and Prangy, the terrific freshman, is out. All smiles today. She's always all smiles. It's one thing I've noticed about her throughout her career. She plays better when she's smiling, having a good time. She's goofy. You see so many different picture personalities, and we all are weird. We're all a little different. Some people are like, don't crack a smile. Some people are, there's just, we're all out there a little bit, but I always love watching her because she's got that big grin on her face. She connects up with her teammates. You know she's having a good time. Were you more goofy or did not crack a smile? If you were to guess, what would you think? You think I'm goofy out there? Could wow, you're thinking about you it. You could have changed over the years. No, I'm about as <laughs> mean as they come. When you're in that circle, it's a whole different ball game for me. It has changed since having kids, though. When I go out there, it's a little different. Look at what Megan King has done. Attacking the zone and now 10 strikeouts. She's two off her career high. Here's Caitlin Kaufman. Kelly Kovac, Shanley, the head coach, she mentioned to us in the fourth inning, we've got to put the ball into play. And so far, only four batters have done so. But none of those batters have recorded a hit. Well, what makes King so difficult is she throws that curveball, like I keep saying, from the left side, which is something that you're not used to seeing. You don't see a ton of lefties. They're rare, and that's why a, when you find a good one, you scoop her. This one given a ride out to right and gone for Caitlin Kaufman. <laughs> Megan King is human. You see her at this one two count. Tries to sneak the rise ball underneath her hands. She's able to get her bat on plane with it. Didn't rise up exactly where she wanted it. What a sweet swing from the freshman Kaufman. That's an at-bat. It's got to feel good coming into home. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Cheryl with the throw. Ferris at first off the bat. So it took five innings for Ohio State to record a hit. Now it has two. He was saying Noah just a little bit off the bag. It was tough to tell, but it looks like she tries to connect her foot up there just at the end. And I think he made the right call. It looks... 
think her foot just connected there after the runner was through. See Coach Alameda calling a timeout. It looked like Bree Betchel was going to beat it out anyway. You love that. You love someone coming up, hitting a bomb. Next batter comes up, drops that sneaky bunt. It just shows they're getting a little bit more comfortable in the box, which means King's just going to have to maybe expand the zone a little bit. Obviously, you can't miss. When you miss, it's usually when teams capitalize. But for her, hasn't really thrown the change up much. So I think if she can maybe change speeds a little bit, doesn't mean she has to get it for a strike. She can get in hitters' heads. Arid stumbling and a base hit. That's Nikki Carver who keeps it rolling for Ohio State. Tying run is in scoring position. She's able to barrel up that curve on the inside part of the plate. And Herod just kind of loses her footing a little bit. I think if she, that's just a classic little bit of a mix up. I think that she regularly has a little bit better footwork. It looked like she tripped a little bit. She has so much speed, we know how She's able to steal bases. I think that that's a play that she normally makes, but she just tripped. And she's laughing at herself. <laughs> An opportunity that Ohio State has to cash in on. So after four and two thirds perfect innings for Megan King, Ohio State has taken her yard. Another runner has reached on an error, and Carver with the single. Yeah, we got five for eight, and then yeah, eight for And Claire Nicholson, you saw it taking a few cuts a moment ago, is going to pinch hit for the number nine hitter, Meg Adi. Well, and if you're Megan King, you have a pinch hitter coming in here. You got two outs on the board. This is your time to shine. As a pitcher, that was always my favorite thing when they would bring a pinch hitter in. They're bringing someone off the bench. They haven't swung. You've already struck out how many players. You know the strike zone. The advantage is in your favor. So it's like using that extra bit of confidence of knowing, hey, this gal hasn't seen me at all. I'm just going to go shove it. Check swing and now two strikes on the sophomore from Ohio. This is just the 15th at bat of Nicholson's career. Time called, a, a baseball free from the bullpen and a shell nut the catcher. Now the count evens. So that rise on the outside part of the plate, that's been a chase pitch for her. 11 strikeouts for King. She allows the home run, but Florida State protects its lead. Up a run. Anna Shelnut, our offensive MVP, brought to you by Wilson, went deep in the fourth inning. A home run against Lauren Rice. And Rice was chased just a few batters later out of the circle. One of now two home runs in today's game. Ohio State hit one in the last half inning. So Shelnut. That long ball, the difference right now. The second ranked Florida State Seminoles. Looking to stay perfect to start the year, already 5 0. Oh. Well, if you were to ask me, and into the bottom of the fifth inning here with this game, if it would have been this tight, I would not have predicted that. Lauren Rice, Kat Duvall on the mound. 
pretty impressive so far, no? Yeah, she's mixed her change up in. Was able to come in and get out of that inning unscathed and we'll see how she does the rest of the way. Ohio State hanging with the defending national champions. That's a strong top of the rankings one week out. UCLA, Florida State, Oklahoma. You've got Washington up there as well. So the Seminoles no longer on the outside looking in. They win that national championship. They're the second ranked team in the country right out of the gates. Well, and you're going to have that no matter what. And whether you're the number one, number two, you've won that national championship. So the pressure's hot and you're going to feel that. But it's also understanding bigger picture. Like you're not going to come out in February right now and be your best. You do not want to be your best. You want to be consistent, obviously, and just continue to get better. But Florida State's not coming out here in February in this tournament and is going to be the exact same team that they just were at the Women's College World Series when they put that trophy up in the air. It's right. You start from the bottom of the mountain and you continue to get better. So it's experiences. It's understanding what it's like in the fifth inning here playing against an Ohio State that's kind of like a has that postseason feel as if this were to be like a regional game or something like that. But you're definitely not going to be your best right now. Elite is in the title. So these are the ranked teams at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. We'll see LSU and Oregon on this field next. Notre Dame and Tennessee, they battle adjacent to where we sit right now. And we're thankful to the city of Clearwater and St. Petersburg as well for aiding in the creation. This is the first annual tournament held here in Clearwater, so a privilege to be here. And our colleague Michelle Smith was also very instrumental in getting this tournament here and bringing the nation's best teams to Clearwater. Big time. She's such a big deal. And I mean, that's coming from someone that's watched her play and was aspiring to be part of an Olympic team to be like a Michelle Smith. So looking at what she does for this community, this area, for softball in general, it's crazy to think that this tournament hasn't been here sooner just for how much she truly does. But she's worked her tail off. So big thank you to her and, and everyone that that has worked to make this tournament go on because I think that this is definitely going to be something special. Fans lining the fence. Runner goes. That was ball four anyway. So a pair of walks. Gordon at second. Cheryl at first. If you're the, if you're the coach coming out, I mean, I'm coming out and I'm getting frustrated. And I'm saying, your team just went out there. We put two runs up on the board. And you're coming out, and you're walking these two hitters. Like, it's your job. You've come into this game. Like, you should know the closing role. Get this stuff done. And there's nothing more than I hate than free passes, right? These hitters are too good to just say, hey, here you go. Unless it's a situation where you definitely need to walk them, go out, challenge them. It's February. Make these hitters do something great when they get to the play. Don't give them that free pass. And, and I think it really means as a pitcher, back in the day, when my team scored, it was my job to go out that next inning and close it out. The cleanup hitter, Elizabeth Mason. Counts nothing at two. Catches the outer edge. Well, I'm a little shocked Mason wasn't showing the bunt. Duvall gets ahead real quick with two strikes. But we got no outs on the board. Runner on first and second. I want to move those runners so we can put two runners potentially in scoring position to make this a 4-1 ball game.
Two two on the way. Off speed gets Mason one down. First punch out for Duvall. And that's why I like doing a sack bunt here. I, I, the only thing you don't want to do is strike out when you have runners on base, right? Your job when you come up is try to hit the ball to the right side to give Gordon the best opportunity to get over to third for an RBI situation. But Duvall has that magic changeup. Since Coach has come out there, I mean, she's really, like, gotten ahead and mixed her pitch as well. She walked the first two batters to begin the inning. Just struck out Mason. Anna Shellnut went yard earlier today. That's foul. Now the count's nothing and two. Well, and if you're Duvall, obviously you know Shellnut home run last at bat, launched it, almost hit the bus in the outfield. I think when you have this 0-2 count, you really have to be a little bit careful. Not too careful where you're overthinking it, but hey, if I'm gonna throw that change up, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna put it a little bit off, off the plate. I have a couple pitches to work with here. It was close to us, I would've had you. Oh, gotcha. That was coming in here. By the way, that bus you referenced, it's no longer there beyond left field, so I scared it away. Shell nuts <laughs> blast. But it did almost hit it. I appreciate I your, thought it was. I appreciate your kindness, too, on the prior pitch. I got you. 0 2. said not long ago you were a little surprised to see Ohio State where it's at. Florida State today, two of nine with runners at scoring position. Now two of ten in back-to-back -back punch outs for Duvall. Now I can see why Duvall was the closer last year. She comes into this game, gets the change piece going right away, and look at that. Shellnut completely fooled. Gotta love it. Walks the first two hitters, but says, hey, coach comes out, gets this under control. Back to back K's. Danny Morgan takes a call at first strike. Flip switched after Kelly Kovac Shanley walked down to the mound to visit with Duvall since back to back strikeouts trying to strand two and keep this a one run game. On the way. This is hugging the line. Kaufman may have a play, and the inning is over. Cat Duvall allows a couple base runners, gets out of it in Ohio State. Wonderful weather, terrific environment in Clearwater this weekend. We're a little inland, not far from the beaches at the Eddie C. Moore Complex. Seventy-five degrees, sun this weekend. Thirty-nine games, twenty-five of which are on our ESPN family of networks. This is the welcome back softball showcase, if you will. And perhaps the last time you were watching, you saw Megan King. Here's Megan King on the mound. She was dominant in that Women's College World Series. 
leading Florida State to its first ever title. And she has 10 strikeouts today. One gone in the sixth. What have you seen? Why has she been so successful? Well, she's just really been able to, to, to fool them. Like, the thing is, I think that Ohio State definitely were, were continuing to swing at the same pitches. So for King, she has a lot of success when she's able to get that curveball working and can, can really mix the rise ball. So she was getting a lot of her strikeouts on that rise ball away from some of these hitters, as well as throwing it up underneath their hands. And there's also been a couple strikeouts looking where you're thinking, how come you're not swinging, swinging the bat? So that's off of King's leg, and Morgan Noah finishes the job. So you get a one-four-three out of that. And pardon, eleven strikeouts. It's one off of her career high. Eleven for Megan King. When Piper just kind of hits that one back, just nicks her in the leg a little bit, just enough to get the easy one-four-three. There's Emily Clark. King, the senior, the Floridian. Misses high. Now two balls and no strikes. Clark hit that grand slam last week against Ole Miss. And the home run is... Actually, the only piece of offense for Ohio State today. Caitlin Kaufman went yard in the fifth. Three balls and a strike. Where do you think Ohio State will stack up this year in the Big Ten? Uh, I think that they should definitely be one of the top teams in there. I mean, looking at how they've just continued to get better. They're, they're a team based on how I think that they're even playing today can make a run in, in the postseason and can give teams a definite run for their money. Tying run on base, the cleanup batter. Ashley Prangy. In comes Morgan, and it drops. Tying run at third. And I think that was funky, and it seemed like it had base base hit right and all over it but it looked like there was just a little bit of lack of communication and from the booth I should be able to hear people talking but you see Noah all of a sudden like exert a little bit more effort because she sees that Morgan's too far back there needs to be more talking more yelling especially if your center field's playing deep see her way back there which means your best chances for Noah and Herod is to try to get anything that's going to drop a little bit over second base Pinch hitter with the tying, and now go-ahead runs aboard. Amy Bailick. Here's the junior from Illinois. in the air for the first baseman, Gordon. A chance for Ohio State to tie. Instead, it's nothing. Florida State leads by a run. Heading to the bottom of the sixth inning in Clearwater. Florida State leads Ohio State by just one. Megan King with 11 strikeouts today, Daniel. One off her career high. Yeah, Megan King, she's been terrific, and she's been put in some pressure situations. And I think that what she's done and continued to just get better throughout this whole game, 
Shellnut with a big solo bomb in the fourth. Then you see Kaufman, the freshman, come up and take King deep. This is a, a little bit of a closer game than uh, I anticipated here in the bottom of the six. Kat Duvall is trying to keep it a close game. She came out of the bullpen in the fourth inning, replaced Lauren Rice. And stranded a couple runners. Florida State, we'll wait and see. They look back at that inning. And notice it ran itself out of what could have been potentially a, a bit of a more of an explosive inning. Zoe Casas at the plate. She doubled and scored one of the two runs in that break. How about Duvall, though, walked the first two batters in the fifth. Comes back, strikeout, strikeout, and then retires Danny Morgan to finish the side. And that's what you want from your pitchers. Her being a senior as well, has gone through a lot. And you like that she's doing that against the Florida State and didn't come into the circle and feel any sense of intimidation. It was like, hey, I'm gonna go at him. I'm gonna mix my pitches and throw my change up. She's working that screwball rise a little bit. Rice went three and a third innings to start. That's a nice opportunity at the defending national champions. One run game in the sixth. Strike three call. Third punch out for Duvall. the pitch where she is having the most success and really keeping Florida State off balance. And Cass is just so fooled on that. Able to locate it on a corner really well. Finds the other corner uh, against the righty, Cassidy Davis. It's not the pressure of elimination game in College World Series, but a game like this must be useful for a team like Florida State, get a challenge early on. Well, and for both these teams, I think that for Ohio State, for them to be able to pull from this game moving forward in the rest of their season, and say something were to come up in postseason where they have to play Florida State again in a regional or, or a super regional or something crazy, Look what we were able to do. And uh, this game is definitely far from over, but we were able to stay in this game with this team, and, and you can use that and pull from that. And See, we competed with the team that just won the Women's College World Series. Like, look what we have the ability to do. And I think that that really can help a team in itself. Yes, it may be intimidating playing a team that just won the World Series and all that, but at the end of the day, it's 43 feet, 60 feet down the, down the baselines. And when you get between the lines, you just go and compete and see what happens. 0-2 to Davis Tall. In the air, down the line. Betzel looks. The first blast for Leslie Ferris. Florida State ahead by two again. That has to feel good for Harris. Comes up, waits on this screwball, turns on it, and crushes this thing out of here. But for Florida State, it just gives you a little extra something heading into the top of the seventh inning. There's nothing scarier than a one-run ball game. Anything can happen when 
when a team needs to score one run. So I think that extra insurance run really is big heading into the top of the seventh. Pair of singles today for Noah. So Florida State, as you mentioned, will try to close it out in the top half of the seventh. Then it will play the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners at 1 o'clock. Number two against number three. You can catch that on ESPNU. There's out number two. The Buckeyes, on the other hand, they've got the rest of the day. They'll next play at 10 Eastern time tomorrow against LSU. Walked back in the first, looking for a hit in the sixth. does do a nice job trying to find the corners. Falls behind, three balls and a strike. Duvall trying to get this to the seventh with Ohio State down just two. Second walk today for Herod. So Florida State has drawn six walks today. Sooner or later, that'll wear on a pitching staff. Herod, as she typically does, takes off. An awkward slide into second base. And she just has so much speed. Clark tries to get this quick because she knows Herod's speed, but Piper comes across the bag and you see Herod trying to go in. I feel like that could have been worse. So I think as far as where Piper's feet were, that, that <laughs> might have been bad. So she's fortunate for how she came out. to see the senior up alert after her second stolen base today. Now the 1-0 to Gordon. 
Two balls, no strikes. So who is strong enough to challenge Florida State in the ACC this year? Can Notre Dame be the team that pushes the Seminoles? Yeah, I think that that's probably going to be someone that gives them a little bit of a challenge. I mean, they dominate the ACC every year, and they, they always win it. And so it would be nice to have someone else give them a little bit of a, little bit of a challenge, but... I mean, you'll see. I, I, I honestly think Notre Dame is going to be the best bet. They always make that NCAA tournament. But what you, you want is you want your conference to get stronger so you ultimately get better, right? So when you go into conference play, and the reason why the SEC and the Pac-12 are as strong as they are is because, yeah, they, they make this schedule as hard as they can in preseason because we know when we get to conference, we're, we're going to play teams that are really, really difficult so I think if the ACC can just continue to get better all these other teams it's only going to make Florida State better it's only going to make Notre Dame better well, and the early returns if you will support that North Carolina beats a top 10 ranked South Carolina team last weekend cover your ears Notre Dame with a big win over Washington yep Ohio State can it rally in the seventh? First things first, Cat Duvall has got to get out of this jam. And this is Sidney Sherrill, maybe the most dangerous hitter in this lineup. Well, and I think if you continue to play with fire, you're going to get burned. So the more you put these hitters on, on, on base, you give them those free passes, something is, is going to to happen. So I think the, the one thing as pitchers we have control of is where we throw the ball. And I think especially with, with young women that I help, you know, in lessons or whatever it may be, that's the one thing I say is like you have control of where that ball goes. So yeah, there's there's a time and a place to put someone on because you don't want to throw to them. But when it comes to two outs and then you walk the next two hitters, like you ultimately have to just be better because you want to give your team the best chance going into the seventh inning to get back into this ball game, and if any more runs score, it's just not happening. A one-two coming. Just off the edge, and Cheryl works the count even. How excited are you for our next game? Oregon, LSU, we've got a top 25 battle between Pac-12 and SEC. This one is flown out towards those Oregon players. Betchel makes the catch. Ohio State needs to rally. Top seven is next. Megan King, 11 strikeouts, one off her career high, nearly unhittable today. Well, and watch me work. Look at her go. That curve rise combination is pretty much unhittable, and that's what she's done throughout this whole game. She's really just continued to throw the ball up and use that curveball, and she's killed it. So she is the defensive MVP today. And one inning to go for another complete game perfect through four and two thirds. So this would be her 44th career complete game. We'll see how she approaches Kaufman. Had that solo shot off her. First battle since that blast of the fifth. The lone piece of offense for Ohio State today. A Buckeyes team that has been to three straight NCAA tournaments. They continue to prove, improve year after year under Kelly Kovac-Shanley. And they'll be there with Michigan and 
Indiana as well at the top of the Big Ten, end of the season. This time King gets the best of Kaufman. Ohio State at least snaps the shutout streak. Florida State defeated its first four or part in its last four opponents in shutout fashion last weekend in Tallahassee. Maybe a chance for Betzel, and she's safe. Tying run coming to the plate in the seventh. my least favorite hitters to throw to because they all they have to do is touch that ball and the speed that they have coming from the left side up the line is almost like a guaranteed hit and that looked like a little bit of a miss hit bunt miss hit Cheryl the second for one Carver beats it out so it's still a chance for Ohio State and Meg Adi will re-enter. She hits from the left side. It's a mighty cut. Counts nothing and one. How about the weekend for Florida State? Oklahoma next. LSU Saturday, Tennessee on Sunday. And that game on Sunday, that'll be on ESPN2. So Florida State to face three straight days worth of top 10 ranked opponents. Talk about being tested. I mean, that. You have to take it pitch by pitch, because if you look at the bigger picture of all this, man, look at all these teams are playing in the next couple of days. It can be over overwhelming a little bit. There's the 2-1. This may do it. Mason underneath. Florida State improves to 6-0. The 44th career complete game for Megan King struck out 11. King came to play today. Senior experience in the circle. Loved watching what she was able to do. But on the flip side, I thought Ohio State really did come to play today. They made some great defensive plays. Obviously could have made a little bit 